Have you ever asked yourself why you were created? Yes. That's a question that's been around probably since the beginning of time. There are volumes and volumes of books that many have written as to why man was created. And that question has caused a lot of frustration. It's caused a lot of pain, even to the point of suicide. Some people have just given up on life because they found no purpose for living. I've heard some su before. well, the suicide nobody left behind was, there's got to be more to life than this. <laughs> and it's a sad, sad tale because the scripture is made clear yeah. the reason we were created. There are some who are skilled at different aspects of life. You have some doctors, surgeons who are skilled with their hands, and they'll tell you, I was created to do surgery, to fix people up. We look at the world of athletics, one may say that Muhammad Ali was created to box, Jordan was created to put a ball through a hoop, Emmett was created to run touchdowns, but no matter what kind of skills we may have, that's not the reason we were created. Paul makes it clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 that we were created for the praise of God's glory. Yes, that's right. Everything else, any other skills that we have, falling behind that. We were created to give God glory. And you know what? God wants his glory. Yeah. We can sure change God on a lot of things. But when it comes to his glory, God is for real about that. Yeah. God takes that very, very seriously. And we'll see here in a minute to the point where he will kill and destroy over his glory. No matter what else happens in our lives, we've got to give God his glory. God must get his glory. And if we're doing anything else in our lives that does not glorify God's holy name, yeah. then we are not doing what we were created to do. We are not doing what we were designed to do. First Samuel chapter 18, the song went like this. Saul has killed his thousands. But David is 10,000. He also killed a bear with his hands. He killed a lion with his hands. He killed a giant named Goliath. And if you were to look at David, you see he was a, a great warrior. And it would be easy to say, David, that's what you were born to do. But David would be the first one to tell you, that's not what I was born to do. All you have to do is read his psalms. And you'll see that David shows he was born to give praise and glory to God. Amen. Turn to the 96th Psalm, Psalm 96. Amen. Psalm 96, beginning in verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Yes. yes. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. That's what God wants us to do, is to declare his name, to praise his name among the nations, to glorify his name. Verse 4, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Is God worthy of praise this morning? Yes. And God wants that praise. God wants that glory. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Yeah. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Give God what he is due. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Amen. Tremble before him all the earth. Amen. Say among the nation, the Lord reigns. Amen. If we find ourselves at a place in our lives where we are not giving praise to God regularly, where we are not giving praise to God daily. Yes. 
Somebody needs to dial 911. Because we got a serious problem. That's an emergency situation. Every time we open our eyes, the first thing we should be doing is giving glory to God. You know what gets me is when folk get up and start complaining right away. It's raining outside. It's too hot outside. It's too cold outside. My back hurts. My everything. Complain, complain. But wait a second. God woke you up this morning. Amen. You know how many people are laying down the Tarrant County morgue this morning who would gladly sit places with you and your problems? Yeah. Preach, brother. Preach. Preach. Every breath we take, we need to give God glory. Amen. Every step we take, we need to give God glory. Yeah. But that's not what we do, is it? No. <laughs> Our lives are all about who? Me. It's all about me. You don't believe that? Last week, put on a scale how much time you spent on you and how much time you spent on God. You and God. What would that scale do? Too much time on ourselves and not enough time on God. And brothers and sisters, God wants his Glory. Amen. We've got to be careful because it's easy to get so caught up in the things that God has given us and the things that God has done for us and the things that God has promised us. It's easy to get to thinking it's all about me. After all, I went to school and got an education with my smarts and got a job. I'm making money. I'm doing that. Forgetting all the time that it was God who gave me the ability to do that. I go to work and with my money buy nice stuff for me. See, me, me, me. It's all about me. We're a forgetful people. We forget the source of every breath we take. Whatever knowledge we have in mind is limited, believe me. Whatever knowledge we have, we forget the source of that knowledge. Whatever strength we have, we forget the source of that strength. And God, we're going to see in a minute, God is serious about the glory that's due him. God doesn't take it lightly when we transfer glory from him and put it on ourselves. Amen. We can fool the people around us. Yeah. But we can't fool God. That's right. I say to myself, I'm, I'm not going to church this Sunday. Because I've got something else in my life that's more important than being part of the work of the Lord. I'm not going to church this Wednesday because I've got other things in my life that are more important than fellowship with the saints. I'm not laying aside this money for the Lord because I'd rather spend it on something for myself. Now, I know we wouldn't say these things, but don't you think God knows that anyway? Yeah. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. <coughs> Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have used us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as often as, as, you, as often as I told you before, and now I'll tell you again, even with tears, many live lives as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. That means it's all about me and what I can get for me. Their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But Paul says our citizenship is in heaven. Why are we so selfish when it comes to the things of God? Why are we so stingy when it comes to giving God the glory he deserves? Wait a second, friend. <laughs> Watch your mouth now. Because I ain't stingy when it comes to God's stuff. I ain't selfish when it comes to God's stuff. Oh, really? 
Now, my math isn't that good, but there are, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, there are 168 hours in a week. I'm not that smart. Is that, is that right, Brother Ken? All right, thank you. Brother Ken's smart. I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm glad he's here. That brother supports me. There are 168 hours in a week. How much of that time do we give to God? Out of the 24 hours we have every day, how much of that time do we give to God? We call this time on Sunday mornings the worship hour. 168 hours in a week, and we have a worship hour for God. That's shameful. That's great pitiful. Yeah. How did worshiping God come down to just one hour? Somebody please help me. Because that's not in my Bible. I think when we finally understand it, when we get the full picture that this journey called life that we're on is not about us, but it's about God's glory. Amen. Then we'll understand that everything we do from the time we wake up to the time we lay down, once we have offered our bodies as living sacrifices, everything we do must be about God's glory. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. All right. Anything else we do is like hanging pictures on the wall of a burning house. Lord have mercy. Matthew chapter 5, Ooh. verse 16. This is what Jesus had in mind when he says, let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father who is in heaven. If we're getting the glory, something's wrong. Now I know, particularly when it comes to preachers, they love to get the glory. Preachers love this right here. Preachers love it. But they're in danger. And anyone is. That's right. When they take away from God's glory. Amen. There's a lot that we can shortchange on God on, but don't shortchange God on his glory. Colossians chapter 3, Paul details how we should live a good life. Things we should do and things we should not do. But he sums it all up with this. Whatever you do, whatever you do, in word or deed, make sure you do it all to the honor of and glory of God. God must get his glory. Oh, you don't know, preacher. You don't know how busy I am. You don't know what's going on in my life. I've got this going on. I've got that going on. Pressure from the right. Pressure from the left. You just don't know. Excuses. Excuses. Yes. And no excuses. M O R E. No excuses. <laughs> well, we can come up with them, can we? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it funny that the things we want to get done, we do that. Mm -hmm. Gee. We do. But when it comes to the work of the Lord, oh, we got excuses. Right. Yeah. We just run out of time. I mean, we can, if we're handing out things in our lives, we hand out and generously, we hand out, we give and give and give. But when it comes to giving to the Lord, whoo, man, I'm fresh out. <laughs> you think God is trying to hear those excuses, Brother Clyde? No. That's why I like the spirit of Noah. After God saved him and his family in the ark, then he opened up the doors and let him out. First thing Noah does, builds an altar. And offers up a sacrifice That's all right. of praise, honor, and glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Now, we have a tendency to be forgetful. Even after God has blessed us in, in wonderful ways, we go on living our lives and God gets an, oh, by the way. Genesis chapter 22, God told Abraham, I want you to take your son. Your only son, yes. who I know you love, mm -hmm. and I want you to offer him up as a sacrifice. Yes. 
Yeah. I know me and I know many. We just started. Wait, wait, wait a second, Lord. There's other sons out here. There's a lot of other things that people would put on that at all. My son, why can't be my son? But I love the spirit of Abraham. Yes. He knew he served a faithful God. And without hesitation, he was ready to sacrifice his own son. Yes. His own soul. Yes. He was ready to give God the glory that he deserves. Mm -hmm. Turn to Psalms 150. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Yes. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. <clears throat> Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Yes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. Amen. And then he says again, praise the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, Paul said, they got me locked up. They got me chained up. But I'm going to glorify God anyway. But Paul, they may never release you. You may never see sunshine again. You may never see freedom again. And Paul says, I'm going to glorify God anyway. But Paul, they might kill you and they're getting ready to cut your head off. And Paul says, I'm going to glorify God anyway. Whether in life or in death, God gets the glory from my life anyway. Yeah. That's right, amen. All that matters is that God is glorified in my body. Everything we say mm -hmm. should be an honor and glory to God. Everything we do should be an honor and glory to God. It's yeah. got to be all about God's glory. Because if we forget, God's got ways of reminding us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. Daniel chapter 4? Yeah. King of Babylon, he was super powerful. Mm -hmm. Nobody could beat him. Yeah. That went to his head. Yeah. And he forgot that God was the source of his strength. He forgot God was the source of his power. And he began that I, me kind of talk. Look at all that I did. And God said, since you can't remember yourself, I'm going to provide you a little reminder my son. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 4. Read with me. Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 33. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was, was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with dew from heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. It's amazing what happens when we raise our eyes toward heaven. See, before it was all about him. Look at me, everybody. Look at all that I did. Look at all that I can do. Look at all the power I got. I got the juice. Nobody can stand before me. Yeah. And God had to bow his head down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I praised the Most High. Yeah. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. Things change in our lives, Greg, when we praise the Most High. Amen. When we honor and glorify him who lives forever. Yeah. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. 
He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and with the peoples of the earth. No one, no one can hold back his hand yeah. or say to him, what have you done? At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. My advisors and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne, and watch this, and became even greater than before. Yeah. It's amazing what God does in our lives when we honor him, when we give him the glory that he deserves. Remember, God is wanting to do more than all we could ask or even imagine through the power that's already at work within us. All we got to do is let him have his way with us. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. Yeah. Those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. When we fail to give God the glory he deserves, he's got a way of getting our attention. Mm -hmm. There was also Belshazzar. Sure. Became king a little while after Nebuchadnezzar. And his story was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You see, God knew Nebuchadnezzar's heart. So he just put him out to pasture for a while. So he could eat some humble pie with the animals out there. Belshazzar was a different story. Belshazzar, and Daniel, when he went to Belshazzar, De Daniel said, you knew, you knew about Nebuchadnezzar, how he raised himself up before God and God had to crush him. Yeah. Daniel said, Belshazzar, you knew about that mm -hmm. and you should have learned from that lesson. Mm -hmm. But Belshazzar did. He was having a party, a party that was all about him mm -hmm. and all the power he had. But God knew his heart. Yeah. And God knew that even some time out to pasture would not have changed him because it was all about him. Yeah. And so God sent the hand, a human hand, to write on a wall. Mm -hmm. I like the, the King James Version. It says, when Belshazzar saw that his knees smoked one another. <laughs> Today we said the dude's knees were not. <laughs> he saw a hand writing on the wall. The Bible says he was scared, just as anybody would be. He called in all of his, his magicians and enchanters to try and interpret what the writing said. None of them could do it. His wife said, call Daniel. And that's when Daniel said, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. You knew better. God gave you a living example in your granddaddy never did lesson. And you failed to follow that example. That's right. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, what that says is, you're going to die tonight. <laughs> and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. All because he failed to give God the glory he deserves. God is serious about getting the glory he deserves. Right. Yeah. What about Herod? In Acts chapter 12. Talk about not giving to God the glory. Turn over to Acts chapter 12. Talk about not giving God the glory he deserves. Acts chapter 12, beginning with verse 19. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him after securing the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king. They asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, yeah. sat on his throne yeah. and delivered a public address to the people. Mm -hmm. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not a man. Yeah. Now, let me stop right there just for a minute. 
If somebody starts to give you that kind of praise, shut them up real quick. Yes, sir. Make sure you let them know that you don't deserve that kind of praise. Yeah. Harold didn't do that. Harold said, uh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> this is the voice of a God, not a man. He was just soaking it up. Verse 23, immediately, not later on, immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God. Yes. Because he did not give God the glory he deserves. That's right. An angel struck him down, and he was eaten by worms. Yes. God is serious about getting the glory he deserves. Yes, he is. God will give temporary blessings to his children, such as wisdom, riches, honor. God will give us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. But one thing God will not give to any man, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 11, my glory will I not give to another. Of all the things that God is generous with, he will never share his glory with anybody. God is jealous when it comes to his glory. That's for him and him alone. You and I owe God glory. Make sure you give God the glory. So I did get eaten up by worms. That doesn't sit too well with me. I'm going to give God the glory he deserves. If God is not getting the glory he deserves from our lives, we got a problem. Amen. We got a big problem. Nebuchadnezzar learned that the hard way. Belshazzar and Herod learned it through an even harder lesson. Yeah. God told us that he must get glory from our lives, but some failed to pay attention because they were too focused on themselves. Mm -hmm. Our glory must be to the creator, not the created. That's right. That's right. 115th Psalm. I love the 115th Psalm in verse 1. The psalmist says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, yeah. but to your name be all the glory. To your name be all the honor. Yeah. To your name be all the praise. Because of your loving kindness. Yeah. And because of your faithfulness. Yes. Yeah. If your life this morning has been such that it has shortchanged God in his glory, please make that right with God. Yes. Whether yes. you need the prayers of the church, the prayers of the elders, whatever your need is, please make it right. 